Hi. Good morning, viewers, and thank you for tuning in to this edition of the Daybreak News with the Ghanaian Critic. I am at the Ministry of Health, and I'm here with Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. And we are going to discuss in very short and um, about the 80,000 vaccines gifted to Guyana by the government of India. Thanks for having me once again, Minister. And um, people, getting right away into it, people, um, Guyanese in general, want to be safe. I know the Ministry of Health has done a lot to ensure that this pandemic is addressed in a certain manner and the safety of Guyanese. But moreover, when it comes to the vaccine, people are a little reserved, I would say. Um, some go to the extreme. It's not like if they don't have other cases where they are extreme about things or they believe in things. But um, firstly, I want to know what assurances that Guyanese can have from yourself, the Ministry of Health, um, that we are safe with these vaccines. Well, first of all, let me thank you for having me on your program. Um, you know, we have been living with this pandemic now for almost a year uh, because our first case was on the 11th of March, uh, 2020. And it was actually the same day that WHO declared this disease to be a global pandemic. So we, we, it's almost a year now uh, that we have been with this disease. And all the experts globally, all the scientists have all agreed that the only way that we can exit this pandemic is if we have a very safe and effective uh, vaccination program. Now, the world has seen that from last year, there's been quite a rush in trying to make sure that we get safe vaccines. And the scientific community has really come together and worked very hard to develop several vaccines. We start seeing them being rolled out as of December last year. And in the United States, you had a Pfizer BioNTech vaccine that is about 95% effective. And you have a vaccine that was created by Moderna that is about 94% effective. Other countries have also uh, develop vaccines. So the Russians have Sputnik V, which is about 92% effective. The Chinese have Sinopharm vaccine, and they have developed about eight or nine different types of vaccine. The Sinopharm one, which we have received as a gift from China, is 79.4% effective. And you also have this AstraZeneca vaccine, which was developed in the UK by Oxford University and produced and manufactured by AstraZeneca. And this was manufactured in India at the Serum Institute. And this one, if you have an interval between the first and the second dose of 12 weeks, that the efficacy is about 82%. So a lot of the vaccines that have been developed are now becoming available to countries. They're still scarce because countries are having a hard time to get access to them. But we have been lucky because we have been able to get two uh, donations. Well, I should say three donations because you would recall earlier, we have received 3,000 doses from the government of Barbados. And now we have 20,000 doses from the government of China from Sinopharm, and we have 80,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine from India. So this has really started our immunization program here in Guyana. And I'm very pleased that when we received the first 3,000 doses, we start giving those to healthcare workers and some of our senior physicians, a person who knows a lot about vaccines and how they work, they were among the first to come out and get it. Um, so you you might know Dr. Mahendra Karpel, who is one of our prominent cardiologists. He was the one, one of the first persons to receive the vaccine. Uh, Dr. Dukidi, the neurosurgeon, he got his vaccine. 
you have Dr. Jeffrey, who's the Director of Medical Services at the Georgetown Public Hospital. He received the vaccine. Another prominent uh, private uh, practitioner, Dr. Gain Sham Singh, received his vaccine. So, so there are many, many, um, I would say, uh, important doctors in our society who recognize the importance of getting their vaccine and they have turned out to receive their first dose and they have uh, already been immunized. And what they're saying to people uh, is come out and get your vaccines. We have, uh, now that we have the 20,000 from Sinopharm and the 80,000 from India, we would be able to immunize about 50,000 persons in Guyana using these doses because for every person you gotta get two doses, right? A first shot and then you get a booster dose. So we would be able to do 50,000 people. And we have prioritized who we're giving this thing to. Can you give us a little bit of detail? So the priority oh. now is to make sure that every single healthcare worker would be able to get the vaccine first. But it's their choice. If they want to take it or not, it's up to them. But we want to make it available uh, to them as first priority. Uh, so it's not mandatory. It's Nobody not, can be forced to no, take a vaccine. No. If you, It's up to you. If you want to take it, it's available to you. If you don't want to take it, that's fine. But we recognize that healthcare workers are at more risk for getting the disease because, you know, the environment in which they work, you don't know who might come to you. If they're uh, positive and if you're not wearing your mask and so forth properly, then you, have, you are at a higher risk of getting the infection. If you are immunized with one of these vaccines, then it reduces your chance of developing the infection. But here's the beauty. Even if you get the infection, because with none of these vaccines, they're 100% protective against you getting the infection. So even if you get the infection, you would not get the most se severe form of the illness, which means that you're not ending up in the hospital, you're not going to get into the be ICU. Worst case scenario, uh, uh, like a flu-like symptoms. Right, so you get it in a more milder form. Mm -hmm. So you're not ending up in the ICU, you wouldn't have all these severe breathing problems, and then you wouldn't die from COVID which is really the good thing. So the risk so of fatality drops significantly. drops significantly. Significantly. So that's why, I mean, it's a no-brainer. If you get the chance to get your vaccine, take it because it will prevent you from dying from COVID. It's as simple as that, right? So all of these vaccines that are available right now in Guyana helps to do that, help to prevent people from dying from COVID, right? And sig significantly reduces transmission of the disease. So we want to, our first priority is to offer this to healthcare workers, both in the public and the private sector. Are, are, is there a specific number of healthcare workers that the Ministry of Health is trying to immunize? We estimate that there are about uh, 10,000 uh, or so healthcare workers. Across Guyana? Across Guyana in, in both public and private sector. So we are aiming to immunize all of them, right? And then with the other 40,000 doses, uh, uh, well, 80,000 doses that we'll have remaining, um, we would be able to immunize 40,000 more people. And we want to aim those doses at persons 16 years and above. And why we want to do that? When we look at the persons who have died from COVID, uh, people 60 years and above make up the majority of the cases of persons who have died from COVID. So if you're older and you get COVID, the risk goes up tremendously. But if we immunize this population, right, if we vaccinate this population, we'll be able to prevent deaths among this population, right? So that's why we want to make sure that older people get the vaccine. And so for the next uh, 80,000 doses that we have remaining after we finish with the healthcare workers, we are prioritizing that for older people. Now, when we first rolled out the 3,000 doses, there were people who jumped the queue, right? So people who didn't meet the requirement as a healthcare worker and they come off the line. We don't want that to happen. So at all of the places where we would be immunizing people, 
we are, we are having strict control where we ask people to bring their ID so we can check your age, that you at least you, you meet the eligibility criteria and that we can take down these details and so forth. So everybody eventually going to get a chance to get a vaccine, right? Because we're working on getting in more vaccines. But if we want to save people's lives, we got to prioritize what we got right now. And that is why we're offering it to healthcare workers first and then the people 60 years involved. So I really want people to work with us on this and help us to make sure that those who are most vulnerable are able to get these vaccines first. And once we do that, um, as we get the next set of vaccines, we will then go to the next level of people and so forth. Minister, a lot has been said about the vaccines and, and I think it's brought a lot of clarity to the citizens, much needed clarity. Can you tell us where we are today in Guyana with coronavirus? So today we have about 400 and something active cases and we have them in all the regions of the country. We have had, uh, as of today, we have 203 deaths and uh, we had about two deaths over the last 24 hours. So people are still dying from this disease and again, uh, we have seen that there are people who probably are fatigued because they've been living with this virus for so long are not abiding by some of the rules that are out there, the physical distancing, the wearing of masks and so forth. Some people are not doing that. And when you don't do that, when you drop your guard, you can get infected because you don't know who is the other person that is next to you, whether they have the disease or not, because a lot of people, the would have milder forms of the disease. They have no signs or symptoms, but they can infect you. You might not be so lucky. So people still have to maintain that as we go through this process of uh, vaccinating people. So I'm hopeful that we can really get people to abide by these rules. We've been talking uh, to everybody. Um, you know, we repeat these things over and over and over. I think people are now tired of hearing us. Um, but we have to repeat it because these are the, the ways that we're going to keep people safe. Once we can immunize about 70 to 80 percent of our adult population, then we would be able to develop something in the population called herd immunity, meaning that the entire population would be protected. But until we don't get there, we still have to wear masks, we still have to protect ourselves. And another thing, to which I think is a misconception, because I've heard this uh, said before. Some people are saying, why are we not immunizing children so that the children can go back to school? Well, the simple reason why we cannot immunize children, it is because none of the vaccines that are currently available are available for children. All of these vaccines are for people 18 years and above. So we don't have a vaccine currently for children. Now the WHO and all these important global bodies, they are now doing what is called clinical trials to see how these vaccines would work in the children population. And maybe three to four months from now, we'll be able to get those results and get new recommendations about how to use the vaccine in the children population. But until then, we want to ensure that we abide by the rules and therefore we would not be immunizing children. Do you have a number, uh, Minister, of children affected fatally by the virus in Guyana? Are actually, there any? Actually, children would have a very mild form of the disease and this has been observed globally. So even if they get infected, it would really, really be mild. We haven't really had any uh, severe form of COVID um, in children in Guyana. And in, in light of the importance of our children, I don't think we should rush into immunizing them and not being really sure that the vaccine yes, is going so to serve that, them well. That's why we are waiting on the recommendations of the WHO, which we expect maybe in three to four months' time. Minister, I want to thank you for this interview. Uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you, and I'm hoping this would be of uh, educational value to our viewers. Thank you guys for listening and watching again. Well, thank you very much for having me.